very good morning today allow me to also present this second the fifth chapter of our class and that is project design project design before we start let's pray dear lord we want to say thank you for being with us thank you for blessing us thank you for taking care of us as you record this lecture to send to your students let it be a blessing to them and a privilege for them that as per now we can know all this. Be with us till the end in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In class, we have looked at other several chapters. Uh, if I can go by, we have looked at the introduction part. We have looked at the introduction where we understood more about the project. And then after the introduction, we went further and looked at project cycle. And after project cycle, last week we looked at the project. We looked at planning a community-based project. Planning a community-based a community-based project, of which we finalized it in the third lecture that I said to you that was recorded. Now the next chapter we are supposed to look at, look at Echo Satellite, is the chapter of project design. In short, we have looked at project one, two, three. Now this is four. And if you look at it, we are moving in a sequence that flows. That at first we knew the introduction part, what is the project. And then we came and understood a project has got a life cycle. And then after that, we are talking about planning a community-based project. Now that you have planned, you know what is planning, and you have known the forms of planning and everything, what next do we need to have? Now, the next thing that you need to have is now what we call a project design. How do you design a project now that you have planned for it? How do you design a project now that you've designed for it? One thing I'll say that a project design, most of the time, it is an early phase of the project life cycle where ideas, processes, resources, and deliverables are planned out. Just as every day when we wake up, we try to design and we move on. What is it that I need to do? You look at everything, and all this goes with what you know. Now, for us to talk about this, we are saying a project design, one thing, it is an early phase. By definition, we are saying it is an early phase and this phase we are talking about early we are talking about early phase of project cycle and being that it is the early phase of project cycle this is where this is where ideas this is where ideas we look at ideas we look at processes we look at resources. We say also and deliverables. And deliverables. All these are planned out. So as I look at this, I'm saying, what is a project design? We are saying it is an early phase of a project cycle life cycle where ideas or processes resources and deliverables are planned out and with this it takes us to for us to do this we need to understand what we call a situation a situation analysis for us to go through this we need to understand what we call a situation analysis and we are asking ourselves what is it that you want to design do you understand the situation? In a situation analysis, four things happen. In a situation analysis, four things happen. And we are saying, for us to understand, as we talk about project design, being a preface of a project life cycle, where ideas, processes, resources, and deliverers are planned out, a situation analysis, therefore, is a process that helps you to identify. It is a process that helps you to identify it helps you to identify one opportunities. It helps you to identify one opportunities. 
and we are saying it is a process that helps you identify opportunities, and not only opportunities, but also helps you to identify what? The challenges. It helps you to identify the opportunities and challenges. And this, we are saying, all this that we help you identify, we realize that they are both internal and external. They are both internal and external. To who? They are both internal to, and external to who? To your organization, services, or product. And they are saying they are all internal and external to your organization, to your organization. And when they are internal to your organization, they affect also your services and products. So as we talk about a situation analysis, we can therefore say that a situation analysis will help you when you look at the opportunities, challenges, and this we are saying they're internal and external, and they affect the organization, the services, or products. Situation analysis, some of the benefits that you have with the situation analysis. Number one, we are saying it is going to help you understand the full scope of the problem. It is going to help you understand the full scope of the problem. Most of us, we know the problem, but we don't know its fullness. But a situation analysis helps you understand the full scope of the problem. It will also help you, when you do a situation analysis, it will also help you to engage. It will also help you to engage and motivate the team members. It will also help you to engage and motivate the team members. And with a situation analysis done properly, it will also help you to reduce wastefulness. It will also help you to reduce wastefulness. Because you know what you are doing and you understand everything. And lastly, we are saying it is also help you to set achievable goals. Set achievable goals. When you have a situation analysis done properly, those are some of the benefits that you go through. Now, what is it that is entailed in a situation analysis? As you look at this, you'll agree with me that the first thing that you need to do in a, in a place, as you go to do any project, as you think of designing a project, you must do a situation analysis. And the situation analysis, as we have said, it helps you to identify the opportunities and the challenges, and all these are both internal and external, and they affect the organization, the services, or the product. What is it that is entailed in a situation analysis? For us to talk about a situation analysis, for us to talk about a situation analysis, the content of a situation analysis, number one, you need to talk about area characteristics. Which area are you talking about? Where is this place that you're talking about? We are looking at the region. If you look at this area, you need to talk about the region. Where is it? As you talk about the region, we are going to talk all that region, which district and everything. You also need to know which sub-county is it. You also need to know what is that unique aspect of this community. What is that peculiar thing that you know in this community? There are those communities that are known for drinking. There are those communities that are known for sugarcane plantation, maize plantation, and things like that. So for us to talk about situation analysis, number one thing that we need to put into place is the area characteristics. Number two thing that you need to put into place as you talk about situation analysis, you also need to talk about population characteristics. Who are these people? Who are these people? What do they do day to day? What is their day to day life activity? Day to day. What are they doing? Are they teachers? Are they workers? What job do they do? What is also so unique about them? What is so unique about these people? I was in Bundibuja and as I worked in Bundibuja, I was taken to Butwa. And in this place, the pygmies, the dwarves. And something, I was given the whole history of how to talk to them, how to behave, 
what you need to do, what I need not to do. I was even told, don't even give a coin. Because when you give one, you're going to give all. Don't even give medicine. Because when you give one, you're going to give all. Not until you're given. And before we went to their place, we needed to know who they are and their population. Another third thing that you need to talk about when you talk about situation analysis, you need to talk about... We need to talk about what are services available in this area. Services available. What are those things that are available in this area? What are they doing? So when you look at this, you need to understand in this area where you are going, what services are available. Imagine you are going to do a project in this area, but you don't understand the area. You are going to do a project in this area. But whatever we are talking about, we are talking about things that you don't understand. What are those opportunities that they have? What are those challenges that are present in this area? What are they? What do they do? You go to a community and then you come with a school. Yet there are thousands of schools in the area. You go to a community and then you come with an hospital. Yet there are so many hospitals in the area. What is it that is there? There are some communities just by going to the community you know you have everything you have. There are those communities where hotels are there, schools are there, churches are there, institutions are there, hospitals are there. You need to look for that unique thing. What is that opportunity that present? And then third, lastly, in a situation analysis, you need to include the current needs. Now that you have known the services available, what is it that they need? What is it that they need? Some of these things that they need might be the improvement of already services that are available. You might be thinking of improving their health because there is health unit, but it is sufficient. It is not sufficient, it is insufficient. You might be thinking of building schools simply because not that they don't have, but you need to improve on the education of the area. You might be thinking of improving on security, not that they don't have policemen, but the ones that are there, there's something that is lacking. And that is what we are saying, you need to have the current needs. So a situation analysis, when you're describing a situation analysis, it can be in a paragraph, but you need to understand the area characteristics, population characteristics, services available, and current needs. For an example, I can say, Bugema University main campus situated 32 kilometers north of Kampala along Gaza Zero Road. It is situated in a rural area that is good for or serene for academic. In terms of there is no much disturbance and there is no much air pollution and there is no noise pollution that might disturb students. With the area it is, it has acquired a bigger land of almost 2 square kilometers. The population in the area includes students from 22 countries. And these countries come in with different programs that they're doing in Bugema University main campus. And these programs run from School of Theology and Religious Studies, School of Social Sciences and Education, all those that I can mention. The services available at Bugema University main campus right now include accommodation, health, hospitality, petty trade, electronic services. Some of the current needs include security, accommodation, internet, etc. That will be a simple situation analysis that I can write. As we continue, ladies and gentlemen, now that you have a situation analysis, you have already had a list of current needs. Now, we need to come in and do what we call problem analysis. We do what we call problem analysis. After talking about a situation, you need to now come and understand the problem analysis. Get this. In a situation analysis when you write, you end with a list. You end with a list of issues that are missing in the community you get that list of issues that are missing in this community. Now, as you have the list of these ideas that are a long list, you cannot have a project to accommodate all. That's why we come to what we call problem analysis. And this is a way of understanding the context within which you intend to work. You go to a community and have given you 100 problems. How are you going to work? For you to work in this community and help the community, you need to come up with what we call
problem analysis. And in the problem analysis, there are four stages that you need to understand. There are four stages that you need to understand. And the first stage, allow me to call it stage one. For us to analyze a problem, we need to go through these four stages. Stage one, we call it problem identification. Problem identification. How do you identify a problem? You have a long list of problems here. You have a long list. How do you identify a problem? I, I want to bring this. A problem is a condition that, or a set of conditions that affect people in a negative way. A problem is a condition or a set of conditions that affect people in a negative way. So after knowing that, that this is a condition or a set of conditions that affect people in a negative way, for me to identify a problem, I need to understand the criteria. Criteria for selecting a core problem. How do you know that this is a problem? Number one thing that you need to understand and makes you understand that this is a problem. All this list of problems they're going to give you. They are not problems not until you do what you call problem analysis. And in the first stage, you need to do what we call problem identification. And for you to identify a problem, you need to understand the criteria for selecting the core problem. What is the criteria? Number one criteria that we look at is the degree. Look at the degree to which if you resolve the problem, it will result in a fundamental change. What degree do you have that if you solve the problem that you have got in here, it will result in a fundamental change? You go to a committee and then you start giving people money. This family have given 1,000. This family have given 10,000. This family have given 1 million. Are you providing change? Look at the degree to which resolving the problem will result in a fundamental change. If you see that the problem that is on your table is not, if you resolve it, it will not give a fundamental change, then it is not a problem. We cannot categorize that as a main problem or as a problem. Why? Because you'll find that it's only solving or supporting only two or three people. So at that point, we say that the problem is not Whatever you look and you feel that is a problem, is not a problem. Why? Because it has got no fundamental change. Change is not felt. It either goes to one family or it is only helping one person. You bring a police post in Bugema University main campus, inside the campus. Which change are you trying to bring? You bring in whatever change you bring in. Just imagine if the university, Bugema University decides to put on uniform. Which change are you bringing? That you want to say that you want to know the students are non-students. It is not. It is a university. It will not result in a fundamental change. Number two criteria that you need to understand. That you need to understand the significance and the scope of the problem. Significance and scope. What is the significance of the problem? What is the scope of the problem? Is the problem only for one person? Or for one department? Or for one school? Or the problem is the whole of Bugema University? If it is for the whole of Bugema University, then it is a problem. You understand when the courses came on the program, that the programs came on, on social media that the universities with programs that are not accredited. And each university had to respond because it was significant for them to respond. But the scope, it was not only for Ugandans, it was worldwide. So as you put on this, what is the significance and the scope of that problem? It will tell you that this is what? This is a problem. Then we also say that identification by the affected community. Do people accept that this is a problem? Identification. Can people identify that this is a problem? Or they say that, ah, that is their problem. Us, that is not our problem. When the whole community comes and says, this is our problem, the universities in Uganda came and said, no, this is a problem we need to solve. So you realize they identified 
with the problem. And now, next we are saying, what will make you know that this is a criteria? Number four, organization principles. Organization programming principles. For example, in Bugema, you don't say that there is no bar. You don't say there is no entertainment. Why? Because the organization programming principles bar us from taking alcoholic beverages, from types of entertainment. So you cannot come and start putting pork at Bugema University. You cannot come and start giving alcohol at Bugema University. You cannot come and start doing other entertainments in Bugema University, having a bar, having a restaurant. You can't. Why? Because the organization programming principles. There are some projects that you cannot just come and say that this is it. Like Plan International, they are only on education. You can never things, take things to do with the refugees to them. UNICEF, UNESCO, each organization comes into place because they have what they call organizational programming principles. So you cannot bring things to do with disaster to Plan International. You cannot bring things to do with insecurity to Plan International because their principles are not there. So whenever you bring them with them, they will only try to give you what we call first aid, but it is not theirs. We can also talk about the comparative advantage. Comparative advantage. What do you have in this organization? For an example, if it is doing with refugees, you will realize the UNHCR has got more advantage to help on that level, unlike Bugema University as, as an institution. So you realize the comparative advantage of each organization will also make the problem a problem. Otherwise, they will sit and give it a first aid, just a touch. Ah, we have helped you, now move on. We are not helping. And lastly, what will also give you that this is a criteria is the interest of the donors. Interest of the donors. What do the donors say about the project? What do the donors say about the pro problem? You realize if you have a problem, like let's say it is insecurity, you go to the UN, you don't go to UNICEF, you don't go to UNESCO. Right now the whole world is confused about homosexuality. And, and you realize that, that those organizations that are affected, and that is why you realize it is the donors. What is the interest of the donors? We have heard rumors of other organizations, countries that have been threatened by big, big, the so-called Western countries, telling them, if you don't recognize the homosexuals, no more projects, no more HIV AIDS drugs. And all these are coming because we need to talk about their interest in all cases. This now takes me to the problem prioritization. For us to know this and for us to identify a problem, that we do in stage one, and we are saying problem identification. Apart from knowing the criteria, you will also need to do what we call prioritization. Problem prioritization. What, how, do you, how do you prioritize a problem? Imagine you have looked at all these criteria and the problems the community have given you are all meeting this criteria. The, the, you see the degree, you see the significance and the scope, people are identifying the problem, organization programming principles, the comparative advantage, and even the interest of the donors, all of them. But you have like 10 problems. How, therefore, do you come with one problem? We come with what we call problem prioritization. In problem prioritization, we have a tool. We have a tool that help us to prioritize a problem. And this tool is called pair wise ranking matrix. This is a tool that helps you to compare two items at a time. And it is a participatory tool that helps you to facilitate the comparison 
of many items, many problems by having participants to prioritize items one at a time. Now, for you to have this, you need to have a list of all the problems in the community that you collect from the situation analysis. Thereafter, if you have 10 of them, if you have 4 of them, if you have 20 of them, you create a matrix. And this matrix is divided into rows and columns. And they are divided into rows and columns according to the number of problems that you have. So if you have 10 problems, then you need to have 10 rows and 10 columns that will fit into this. And this continues by saying that each of them is written in a sequence manner. And each problem in the matrix should then be compared with others, not with itself. You compare this problem with others. The winner or the tallying done at the end of the day should give you the prioritized problem. The matrix cells are shaded when they represent the intersection of the same item. Then we tally and get the scores. I want to do this in a simple way. Let me say I have three problems, just for the case of this class. Let me say we have three problems. A number one problem in Pugema University is accommodation. Number one problem is accommodation. Number two is insecurity. Insecurity. And number three is poor Wi-Fi. Let me go with these three problems. That after doing my problem identification and looking at the situation analysis, they gave me those. And I looked at the, at the criteria, I found they all become important for this case. Now, if I'm to do pairs ranking matrix, I'm saying that it is a tool that helps us to compare all these items. Now, if I have three, then I need to have three rows. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I need to have three columns. One, two, one, two, and three. You'll ask me, why are we having extra? Now, most of the time, we use this extra column, we use this extra row and extra column for what we call labels. So, I need to have accommodation. Accommodation. I need to have insecurity. I need to have poor Wi-Fi. And in that order, I'll also come and put accommodation, and also come and put insecurity, and also come and put poor Wi-Fi. And we are saying, in the, col in the cells, these are cells. In the cells where the item is not comparing with another one, we shade them. In the cell where the item is not comparing with the other, is shaded. That item that does not compare with the other one is shaded. It compares with itself. Like accommodation cannot be compared with itself. Accommodation can only be compared with insecurity and Wi-Fi. And that insecurity cannot be compared with insecurity. Wi-Fi can also not be compared with Wi-Fi. Now you ask yourself, this now forms the upper side and the downer side of the matrix. Now, we can ask ourselves, between accommodation and insecurity, which one is a priority right now? And I can say, allow me to do this, I can say it is accommodation. I can say the community has agreed that is accommodation. Between accommodation and Wi-Fi, what is a priority problem? Then people could say accommodation. Now, they come in and say, between insecurity and accommodation, we already had, it is accommodation. And we say, between insecurity and Wi-Fi, then somebody can say, ah, insecurity. That's what people have agreed. And then they come and say, between poor Wi-Fi and accommodation, which you already had as what? Accommodation. And then between poor Wi-Fi and insecurity, we already had it as what? Insecurity. So in tallying, when we come to tallying, then I come in and say, accommodation. I come in and say, accommodation, we have one, two, three, four. So you have zero, four. And then I have insecurity. 
it is 1, 2, 0, 2. And then I have poor Wi-Fi. And the committee realized that poor Wi-Fi has got 0, 0. It does not mean that Wi-Fi is, is not a problem. It does not mean that insecurity is not a problem. It does not mean that accommodation is not a problem. All of them are problems. But because accommodation is a main problem, somebody can argue it out that, yes, solving accommodation, we can solve insecurity and we can solve Wi-Fi. Let me give you this experience. Just imagine if Bugema University is to build hostels. When they do proper hostels, they must provide security. A perimeter wall, CCTV cameras, locks, and a watchman. So you realize improving on accommodation in Bugema University will also help us solve what? Insecurity. But if I'm a good landlord, if I'm a best landlord in the area, then I'll provide my hostel with all this that I build in a hostel and in that hostel I put what? Proper security and in that hostel I put what? Wi-Fi. And I can even improve on security by giving students a van to be taking them to campus and bringing them. So even at night, they are safe. The place is guarded. The perimeter wall is okay. So at the end of the day, you realize accommodation can even help us to solve this. That's why we say problem prioritization. When we come in and prioritize accommodation, it does not mean that insecurity is not a problem. It does not mean that poor Wi-Fi is not a problem. No, all these are problems. But when we prioritize accommodation, there are high chances of solving insecurity and there are also high chances of solving poor Wi-Fi. And this leads us that in the next stage, all that is done in stage one. Stage one problem identification. As we continue in the problem analysis, we go to stage two. What is stage two? Stage two is talking about identifying the underlying causes of the core problem. Stage two. Stage two, we identify the underlying causes. Underlying causes of the problem. What is the problem? Poor accommodation. What is the problem? Poor accommodation. What are the causes of that poor accommodation? You can talk about one is negligence of the landlord. We can talk about what causes poor accommodation? Insecurity of the hostels. What causes poor accommodation? Why is it poor? Poor Wi Fi. What causes poor accommodation? Poor sanitation. So you realize even other causes here, what we have, are becoming causes of that. And then we go to stage three. Stage three of the problem analysis talks about we need to identify the underlying consequences of the problem. What are the underlying consequences of the problem? Then somebody can say, if we have negligence, we have insecurity, we have poor Wi-Fi, we have poor sanitation, and we are saying it is poor accommodation. What are some of the causes we can have here? Some of the causes we can have here is even, I can talk about poor performance of students. Poor performance. Theft. School dropout. Health-related diseases. We can even have death. And we can even have, when people start doing of this, we can even have closure of the university. These are possible consequences of the problem. And then it takes us to stage four. Stage four. Stage four. And stage four, we are talking about what are those conditions to the problem. Stage four. Conditions to the problem. If you have poor accommodation, what are those conditions to the problem? You realize conditions 
are identified as direct causes of the problem and frequently exist because of certain human behaviors. These conditions exist because of certain human behaviors. So you realize here, we had even put negligence here, but you realize this is a human behavior. So some of the conditions that we love now here, you will agree with me, number one of certain human conditions we can have that causes this poor accommodation. We can have what? Negligence. When the landlords just neglect, we can have laziness. The caretakers are very lazy. We can have attitude. People just have negative attitude. And this gives us what we call a project design. Now, for us to understand this in detail, for us to understand this in detail, we need to know what we have. And for us to do a good problem analysis, stage two, stage three, and stage four, we do what we call, we use a tool called problem tree analysis. For us to understand stage two, three, and four accordingly, we use what we call problem tree analysis. A problem tree analysis is also called causal effect tree. So our problem for this case, our problem for this case is poor, our problem for this case is poor accommodation. Our problem in this case is poor accommodation. So if this is a problem of the community, poor accommodation, this is the stem of the tree. We ask ourselves, what are those causes of the problem? What are those causes of the problem? Allow me to use only three. What are those causes of the problem? We have said them. Number one cause of the problem is what? Insecurity. Number one cause of the problem that we said there was insecurity. Number two cause of the problem that we had was poor sanitation. Poor sanitation. And number three cause of the problem that we had was poor Wi-Fi. Poor Wi-Fi. Somebody will tell you that accommodation is poor because we don't have Wi-Fi. Somebody will tell you that accommodation is poor because of poor sanitation. Somebody will tell you accommodation is poor because of insecurity. Now we ask ourselves, what are the causes of insecurity? What are the causes of insecurity? What are the causes of poor sanitation? What are the causes of poor Wi-Fi? So for purposes of time, allow me to run like, what are the causes of insecurity? I'll give it A, B, C. What are the causes of poor sanitation? D, E, F. What are the causes of poor Wi-Fi? G, H, and I. Now you ask yourself again, what are the causes of A? What are the causes of B? What are the causes of C? What are the causes of D, E, F, G, H, I? So when you identify all these causes, you realize this level is the primary level primary level. This level is the secondary level. And this level becomes the tertiary level. And most of the cases we are saying do not repeat a cause of a problem. But we ask ourselves again, what are the consequences of poor accommodation? What are the consequences of poor accommodation? And we have, I can use three. Number one we talked about is theft. We talked about diseases. We talked about poor performance in class. And because thefts are so many, accommodation is poor, we can even lead to the final one, death or closure of the university. This is a simple problem tree analysis. This is a simple problem, problem tree analysis. 
And a problem tree analysis will give you two parts. And the first part that it will give you, it will give you the problem. Not two parts, it will give you three parts. The problem, which is the stem of the tree. Now, if that is the stem of the tree, it will also give you the causes, which is always referred to us as the roots of the problem. And we have the consequences, which can also be looked at in a tree. We can say that the branches, branches of the tree, the branches, the fruits. Now somebody is there asking, if this is a problem tree, if this is a problem tree, what is the opposite of a problem tree? The opposite of a problem tree is called objective tree. Whereby everything that is negative here is put to positive. Diseases, lack of diseases, theft, lack of theft, poor performance, improved performance, poor accommodation, improved accommodation, insecurity, security, poor sanitation, proper sanitation, poor Wi-Fi, improved Wi-Fi, and everything negative changes to positive, then we have it, we call it an objective tree. Now, with that, we come and ask ourselves, with this, we have not stated anything. But you realize we have the problem. And now we know the causes of the problem. We now know the consequences of the problem. And we now know the problem. The root causes, their levels, and everything. Then we ask ourselves, now, if I'm supposed to talk about this problem, what is the problem? What is the problem? Then, for us to continue, because you're just saying that the problem is poor sanitation, we need to do what we call Problem statement. Problem statement. Now, you have known that the problem is poor sanitation. Then talk to me. Tell me what is a problem statement. For us to write a problem statement, we need to know, number one, what is the problem. And from there, you already have it. What is the problem? Poor Accommodation. And as talk about poor accommodation, we need to understand, number two, what is the size of the problem? What is the size of the problem? And size here is expressed in terms of percentage or quality words, like majority. Majority of the students are affected in the accommodation. 75% of the students, three out of five, you're using ratios, three out of five students have ever been affected because of the accommodation. Now, number three thing for you to write the problem statement that you need to look at is you need to understand what are the causes of the problem. What are the causes of the problem? Of course, you have listed them down. And you realize the causes that was listed were, number one, insecurity. We had poor sanitation. We had poor Wi-Fi. Those are the primary causes that we listed. Then you come and ask also, what are the consequences? All these are coming from the problem tree. Identify what are the consequences. Then you realize the consequences that we are given is theft, poor performance, diseases, etc. And then, the fifth one that you need to know, what makes this is, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What is it? What can be done? What can be done? Now, what do you want to do? In short, if the accommodation is poor, meaning there is an aspect of accommodation, but what do you want to do? 
we can talk about improve. What we want to do is to improve accommodation. We need to improve on the accommodation of Bugema University. So, my problem statement can be written in a very short manner and a very clear manner that I can talk about this. I can say majority of the students in Bugema University main campus experience poor accommodation in their hostels where they stay. This is caused by insecurities issues, poor sanitation issues, and even poor Wi-Fi that they have in their hostels. If this is not worked on accordingly, then we have cases of theft. We have cases of poor performance of students because they keep on reminding themselves of their hostels. We have cases of diseases that are common among the students. And what this project seeks, it seeks to improve on the accommodation at Bugema University main campus. It seeks to improve on the accommodation at Bugema University main campus. Ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of our lecture today. This marks the end of our lecture today. And as purpose of summary, I can summarize it by saying that today, we have looked at number one. Now, today we have looked at project design. Project design. And what we design in a project, we say this is an early phase. And for us to design a project, we have agreed that number first thing that you need to do, you need to look at the problem, you need to look at the situation. We need to look at, number one thing that we need to look at is the situation analysis. Situation analysis. The situation analysis, we have said it has got four main components. That it looks at the area characteristics, population characteristics, services available, and current needs. In the current needs, you come with a list of problems. Now, for us to understand the problems, we need to say that we need to do, the second thing is problem analysis. And in problem analysis, we have said it has got four stages. It has got four stages. Stage one is talking about problem identification. And for you to identify a problem, you need to understand the criteria for selecting a core problem. And if you have understood the criteria and you qualify that this is a problem, you cannot solve all the problems that you get from the situation analysis. You only come and do what we call pair wise ranking matrix and the pairs ranking matrix help you to prioritize a problem help you to prioritize a problem a problem when it is prioritized in the first stage that is stage one it takes you to the second stage which talks about identifying the underlying causes the third stage takes about identifying the underlying consequences and the fourth stage takes about the behavior. All the second to fourth stage are achieved by using a tool we call problem tree analysis. Problem tree analysis. And this problem tree analysis is also called the causal effect tree. And it helps you to identify what are the causes of the problem, what are the consequences of the problem. When we have done the problem tree analysis, you agree with me, you don't have authority to say that this is a problem. It, you can't. You cannot just say that the problem is situation, the problem is poor accommodation. The essence of this is also help you to, to know how to describe, how to state the problem. And that is problem statement. And for us to state the problem, we are saying we need to know what is the problem, poor accommodation. What is the size of the problem, majority of the students. What are the causes of the problem, theft. Sorry, what are the causes of the problem, which we have identified as the primary causes. We have said poor sanitation. We have talked about poor Wi-Fi. We have talked about insecurity. 
And then we go further. What are the consequences? Poor performance, theft, you name it. Loss of life, diseases, and closure of the university. Now, what do you want to do? For you to state a problem, we need now to improve the accommodation in Bugema University. This marks the end of our class. And as this, we are saying, a project design is an easy step that helps us to understand. Ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of our class. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for being with us and for guiding us. Thank you for providing this knowledge. I pray that this knowledge helps the student in whatever they're doing in Jesus' name. We pray and believe. Amen, amen, amen.